welcome to the real thing with me, Greg Friel. It's going to be like this, isn't it? Continue, continue. Um, yes, another episode of the Friel Thing podcast with me, Greg Friel. And I have a very good friend of mine, a um, wonderful guy called Niall Rackman. Niall, who are you and why the hell am I talking to you? So I can answer one of those questions. Mm-hmm. And that's why you're talking to me. No, I'm kidding. Uh, my name is Niall. Uh, I run a couple of businesses, uh, all of them in the majority of them in the education sector. Um, mm-hmm. Part of it's in health and safety. The other part is in sort of organisational learning and development. So uh, I've got a couple of strings to my bow while you're talking to me today. Um, because you're massively entertaining. Massively entertaining or I'm at the bottom of the list of people that you're podcasting. Which one are we going for? I would go for massively entertaining. Then we'll go with that one. Perfect. Yeah. So step it up. Absolutely. Uh, if, if at some point throughout this podcast you don't randomly break into a dance, people will be disappointed. Okay. That's all I'm saying. Um, anyway, so now we were just discussing before we went on air, as it were, when we first met and we were trying to work out exactly when it was. It was we've never actually met in the real world because of the whole lockdown situation which feels really, really weird because it actually feels like I've known you for years. But I think we met at um, a networking event run by uh, the lovely Courtney Flynn um, and when she was still working at Now Meet or Now the conference thing that she was doing. Um, Yeah, so it was Now Meet was the event. Um, And then reconnected at Virtual Coffee at the Castle. Um, which um, is run by Dan Christie, uh, and yourself on Zoom duties. Um, yeah, so when was that? That was, what, maybe August, September? Yeah, some, something like that, yeah. Um, and life has never been the same. No, once you, once you go Greg, you never go back, that's what they Indeed. say. Indeed, um, yeah, something like that. Yeah, we'll go with that one. Um, yeah. yeah, but just when you were mentioning there about never meeting people in person, it's a dead weird concept. I did weird thought, if I'm honest. The number of people that we've met over the last year just using Zoom. Mm-hmm. But you don't know how tall anybody is. <laughs> I don't know if that, when, it, when I meet you in real life... I'm 5'11". You're, oh, right, okay. But okay. That's roughly the same height as me. I'm sort of a, a borderline 5'10". It depends who's asking. If it's on the Tinder profile, it's 5'10". See, that, that's quite funny because in my head, I think you're like a wee guy. I'm, I'm sm- smallish. I'm, I'm average size. We'll go with average mm-hmm. size. Um, right, okay. Unless, unless it's on the Tinder, then I'm six foot two. Indeed. And extremely well built. But you got I was always head. gutted that I didn't quite hit the six foot mark. It was five eleven. I'm like, not quite six foot. It just really kind of annoyed me. I was like, no, must grow taller. Which explains why I sometimes wear high heels. That's a discussion for another day. Yeah. Anyway, uh so Niall, let's go back to pre COVID and what was your what did your business look like then first to train you 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 were doing your training but how how did that differ from you know what came after so we started the business i say we it's the royal we um it's me one uh, it, it is it is me uh, i started the business after uni in 2019 june 2019 having completed my five years at uni and thought you know what fantastic let's uh, five years five years at uni Four years in Scotland, one year in Madrid and Spain, um, which was really wow, nice. Which was great fun. Um, what did you study? I studied international business and languages, hence the Spain side of things. Um, right. And then when I was over in Spain, I worked for an accounts firm uh, for an internship for between December and August. Um, On a scale of one to ten, how dull was working for an accountancy firm? I loved it. Really? I loved it. Wow. Yeah. Um, okay. It was, it Not was my idea of fun, but still okay. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. Doing the physical work was was uh, interesting, shall mm-hmm. we say? But I, I basically had to work in Spanish language the whole time. Oh wow, amazing! Um, basically, so, the day. I, so very practical application of what it, what it was you're actually studying at university, which is kind of unusual. Absolutely. Well, the day I arrived at the office, there's an email circulated around, basically saying. Now has arrived in the office. Now is an English speaker, but he needs to learn Spanish. Do not let me catch you speaking to Nayo in, in English unless 
there is an emergency basically wow. uh, you must speak to them in Spanish and it was the best thing that could ever happen to me um, probably was very frustrating for my uh, my colleagues to start with when they spoke to me in Spanish and I looked at them like the typical British person like no idea what you're wanting me to do here mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but you know I learned Spanish and to this day I can still speak it more or less uh, how did you how did you um, learn what was your your method what was my method uh, don't speak English as much as humanly possible <laughs> um, yeah no but you don't just randomly just pick up stuff and you know no. d- did you like have like audio books or anything like a course or something like that to, so, or, or was it just being so immersed in the fact that you're there and talking to people that you know I guess I'm, I guess I speak Spanish now it was, it was sort of a bit of that. It was I used to listen to there's a type of music called the reggaeton, um, which mm-hmm. is like Spanish pop ish music. It's like yeah. what, what, what the young ones, the young ones, the young ones, because <laughs> you're so old. <laughs> yeah, I'm 24. That's that. Nearly, nearly at retirement. Um, no, uh, so like, I'd listen to that music, pick up little bits and bobs from there, and I'd also listen and, and watch Spanish TV. Um, right. Sometimes with the Spanish subtitles on, sometimes with mm-hmm. the English subtitles on, and the audio was obviously in Spanish, um, and that helped me pick it up. But I guess the main thing that that got me to the point that I that I got to when I was when I was in Spain was I lived in a flat with it when it, when I moved it over. I lived in a flat with a Colombian, an Italian, a French guy, wow. and a guy from Holland. I'm so, not going to ask. What those parties were like. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Um, Moving on. Yes. But 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 the common language in the in the flat was Spanish, so I did not speak English unless I phoned home. Um, which obviously wow. when, when you're trying to say that's, that's fairly intense. Did you? I mean, did you find it kind of quite? I would find it maybe a bit kind of almost kind of claustrophobic. You're kind of like I kind of need to, you know, speak. You know what what you're used to you're used to speaking. You know. Was it frustrating? More frustrating internally when when I'd be told how to say something and I'd forget because obviously you can't you can't pick everything up mm-hmm. straight, straight away. Uh, and there was certain words that I would forget or certain sort of uh, categorization of, of of the phrases that you would say. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you eventually it it just clicks one day and you wake up and you'll be like, right, okay, I know mm-hmm. how to say these sentences now, and um, so I can say yeah. a lot of different. Spanish words in relation to accountancy that I don't think anybody who's an English speaker needs to know. Mm-hmm. Uh, as long as you can say two beers in Spanish, then you're all right. Absolutely. And and a table for four, as good old Kevin Bridges teach, Indeed. Uh, taught us all. Exactly. exactly. Um, but yeah, back back to back to the story. So I, I, I did my five years at uni. I um, finished up in 2019. I tried to get a grad job, but unfortunately... Although you were mentioning how great I was, um, to the recruiters of the big firms, I was not good enough. Um, so I couldn't get a job. And I thought, I, I volunteer part-time in the medical field. And I thought mm-hmm. um, part of that was community outreach. And I thought, you know what? People like doing first aid training, especially when I do it. Um, and that's just blowing my own trumpet there. Um, of but course. When You'd I, never hear me talk about myself like that. Never, no. never. Never, no. absolutely not. Um, yeah, so 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 once once I decided to go down that, I thought absolutely everybody would love to do first aid training. I'll start my first aid company up, work for five years, and retire to the Bahamas. It would be great. Um, <laughs> and how naive I was. Started up in June twenty nineteen, um, and was sort of ticking over, building things up a little bit, but uh, trying to get to the point. Um, trying, trying to build the company as big as possible. But realized very quickly that. Not everybody wants to learn first aid, and certainly they don't want to do it if they don't have to do it. Uh, it tends yeah. to happen after somebody has an accident, they'll turn around and go, I wish I knew what I was doing. Mm-hmm. And then they'll, they'll go and get a training course. Uh, and it's a very, very uh, highly competitive industry as well. So we got to the 22nd of March, 2020, just sort of yes. taking over. Uh, and then the inevitable was coming. Um, so Lockdown. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And you don't even need voiceover effects for that mm-hmm. one. No, uh, but, but you do. It, the, the mic does help. Lockdown. See. Oh wow. Um. Yeah. So, 
twenty second was uh, was the twenty third was obviously looming over us, and the twenty second mm-hmm. uh, it was almost like the final countdown. Um, and you can plug that little song in there if you want. Yeah, sorry. Um, and we thought, oh no, we're going to lose everything overnight. And lo and behold, yeah. stay at home message: do not go to work, do not leave your house, only leave the house for essential purposes. What happened? Mm. We, we lost everything. So that was that was interesting. Um, but how 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 quickly did you kind of go? Okay, right, this is not happening. But if we pivot. To use that phrase, um, you know, how quickly were you like, mm, let's get this online, let's try and get this online and make this work in, in that kind of capacity? So, did, that, did you panic and kind of go, let's do it now, or was it, let's just sort of see, is this going to be a couple of weeks, or, or what's happening? It took me to week two of the initial three weeks that we were meant to be in lockdown. Remember when we said three weeks, yeah. and that would be it back normal, back, in, back into the pub having a beer. Uh, it took me till about week two, and I went to uh, went to a networking event, um, and was was basically one of the speakers at the event said writing a bit of paper saying what does this mean mean now, uh, and basically did, did did a good bit of mind mapping. Is that is that the politically Brit- mm-hmm. political correct way to say that now? Uh, we'll go with that one. Mind mapping and basically decided at that point. What was what what we had previously will not sustain and, and survive the period of 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 lockdown, no matter mm-hmm. how, how long it's going to be, and we need to sort of pivot. And I hate that word, but pivot and make a change. I just think I think of it. Ross and friends with the couch. That's yeah. as soon as, as soon as anybody says that, that's what I think. And I'm gonna I'm gonna make a quite um, a revelation here. Is I don't like friends, nor do I watch friends. However, that. It's been nice talking to you now. Yeah, it's been great. It's been great. Um, Interview ends now. Um, no, I can I can understand that. I mean, not, my not wife and I all but... grew up, grew up, or rather grew up together. As it was really whenever we, um, whenever we first started seeing each other, friends was the thing. Mm-hmm. So, um, so it kind of it maps our relationship at the same time. So mm-hmm. that's it kind of. I, I did think it kind of lost it a bit. In it, season mm-hmm. ten, see that. The whole thing with Joey and Rachel, that I was like, nah, I'm out. I, I so, mean, but I, this this will mean nothing to you if you if you're kind of like, no, I don't like Friends, I don't watch it. No, I mean, I grew up with Breaking Bad, so we can take from that what what, okay. what I grew up learning about and, and what to do. But um, for the purposes of law enforcement, I didn't. I, it's not me. It's Greg. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, back to the back to the pivot. We 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 came up. The, to the conclusion that things weren't going back to normal very quickly yes. until we thought, how do we take our training online? Now, we did first aid training, which is practical, hands-on training. How can I teach, and, and, and the question arose, how can I teach you how to save a life over Zoom? Mm. And it was pretty much nigh on impossible um, because you need the practical element. I don't sure. want to yeah. tell you how to do something and you walk into it and go, I have no idea what I'm doing here. Um, I've and never heard of blood. Yeah, and and it's a bit and it's a bit messy, and you have to think back to a Zoom class rather than I remember mm-hmm. doing this. Uh, yeah, yeah, you, you um, have that sense memory that my I did my yeah. hands did this, and it, yeah, absolutely, yeah, absolutely. So, so I've got a, a, an extremely um, I'm, I'm extremely fortunate to work with a gentleman uh, called Michael Byrne, um, and I've been working. I know with Michael him. very well. He's actually been a guest on on this podcast. Fantastic! I love his work. Fantastic, Fantastic. stuff. Fantastic. Um, yeah. So Michael and I met each other. Just about December two thousand and nineteen, November December two thousand nineteen, and we started speaking to each other. Obviously, not with anything in mind, thinking of anything at all. We just started chatting to each other um, because I taught first aid for mental health, and he's massive in the mental health field in the yes. area. Um, so lockdown hit. We were sitting and we had a conversation again, and basically we came to the conclusion that the two of us can make something. Incredible, not just for ourselves and, and uh, as a as a business, business thing, view, yeah. but we can help people and we can yeah. benefit individuals. So in May, so it took us about a month to sort of figure out the the bits and bobs that we we're needing to do, and then it hit May time, and we launched our first aid for mental health, mixing the academic side, which is which was a qualification, and then threw in the lived experience of what Michael has been through. Yeah, which is basically 
why didn't somebody notice and why didn't somebody spot the signs and using that lets us show um, and, and brings people into the fact that people are suffering people are going through things but do you pick it up pick up on it why not mm-hmm. and then it encourages people to look into things a wee bit more um, so, we, so we've been doing that and then working on different projects and different things all the way through the year and um, we've been extremely fortunate that we managed to get a couple of grants through, which has allowed us to, to develop in, in different areas. Um, one of which was our sort of our main diversification strategy, which is our platform that we're that we're looking to launch over the next soft launch in the next couple of months, and then full market launch in the next six months, which would uh, which is workplace training courses, um, which is our big platform for learning okay. development. Is that going to be like a live training thing or is it going to be like an online resource where there's videos and that kind of set of things so it's like a Udemy course or that kind no. of thing? Um, I'm, I'm a strong believer. I, I spent years in hospitality, working in hospitality, and we would get sent links to complete e-learning modules and I hate them with a passion. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and understand. I'm sure that I'm not the only person. If anybody's watching this, you're probably nodding your head along as well thinking, yeah, I don't like e-learning. I think you're assuming that people are watching this now. That's also a great assumption there as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, well. Um, so, yeah, the, 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 the element of e-learning has its place in society, but it's yes. over. I, and I think, it, I mean, it, it depends on how you like to learn. I mean, that, I think, you know, that doesn't work for you, but there's other people that are like, you know, I like to work at my own pace yeah. and I like to be able to do this. But sometimes it's the blended approach having, you know, the pre-recorded video, but then there's going to be, like a, a live zoom call or something like that at some point and then it's going to be able to mark it along the way um and it kind of you know you're able to kind of maintain progress and it kind of you're you're accountable then to kind of work through the program rather than here it is you're on your own yeah yeah good luck uh, i signed yeah. up to about four or five e-learning courses and they're all sitting on an account somewhere that i've never i've, I've done maybe one day and then gone i've got no drive to go back to it mm-hmm um, and as as a country, we've had a year of, for some of us, has been a year on furlough, sitting in the house, not really developing our own skills and and, and doing doing things. So I think as a, as a country, we're going to have a little bit of a a little bit of catching up to do, shall we say? Um, and what I'm wanting to create and what I'm in the process of creating is a space where any type of teacher. Um, in terms of that could provide value to organizations can be found and be booked and everything sort of in the one place for them um, yeah make it making the whole sort of customer journey in general easier um, mm-hmm. and find, finding training and developing the smaller trainers the the, the little uh, the little guys shall we say or the little people and um, shall we say, um, develop their own businesses as well. So that's what that's what I've been up to. That's how I pivoted. I've looked at the general market, looked at things being mm-hmm. changing. We are going to change. We have to accept the change and just adapting. And, and, and I was about to say the Bear Grylls phrase of adapt and overcome there, but um, mm-hmm. that sort of idea. Um, I, I was being interviewed back in June. I, I just put out my single stay home uh, which i put out my birthday last year and i was on um a radio interview doing a radio interview that week for it and i used the phrase they were they were asking how lockdown was going for me and all that kind of thing i said well you know it's one of these things adapt or die yeah. adapt or die you see that expression in the middle of a pandemic is maybe not the best choice of words no um but it's just it is a a phrase that's commonly used <laughs> um in the business sense but um my family still goes really greg adapter die so i think that's going to be a t-shirt i think i need to to do uh, get have an adapter die t-shirt at some point absolutely absolutely, absolutely. Get, one get one you can get one no problem fist up or something like that exactly so um when whenever you were back in in uni uh-huh. you were presumably thinking i'm going to graduate and I'm going to get a job yeah. you know in your head what you know, what were you thinking I would really like to do were you thinking I want to work with people I want to do something that's kind of really going to help other people because I mean that's that's really what you do you know every day yeah. you just make lives better oh. Oh, um, well, yeah. what, 
Is, is that kind of where your head was at when you were back then? So when I was back in uni, my dream job was the Audi recruitment program, the area manager one. Now, I don't know what I You say that like I, I know what that is. What is that? The area manager program was a year long, two year long program um, where you went in, got all your training. And by the end of it, you were given an area and a bunch of supermarket stores to basically, in, in essence, you own them in terms of ensuring everything runs properly. Right, okay. Um, but you obviously have the brand and the backing of the Aldi head, head, head office. Um, so it was something that was heavily, heavily marketed at uni. Like any any um, mouse mats in the uni were all the Aldi graduate schemes uh, mouse really? mats. Really? Right, um, but it was, it was something that I, I don't know what attracted to, to me the most was the element of the um, compensation. It was massively higher than any of the other ones um, and you also got an Audi with it as well as a company car hey um, an Audi from Aldi an Audi from Aldi yeah um, I wonder if that's why they chose that brand possibly that's that's quite smart I've just realised that um, anyway a marketing brain taking over absolutely absolutely so yeah that's what I wanted to do um, I wanted to do that purely from or move back to Spain that was the two things that I wanted to do. Yeah. Um, naturally, having lived in Spain and, and loved it completely, um, I, I, if I had the chance, I would probably have gone back, um, but I chose not to, purely from the element of what happened on the 31st of December 2020. Was that? Or is it 31st of January? Brexit. <laughs> whatever day breaks oh right yeah I was going well, I was going what happened oh right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, yes. remember that thing that happened yeah, yeah, yeah. it's kind of like pandemic pandemic oh Brexit yeah yeah. Um, yeah yeah I didn't want to move all the way over to Spain get my life sorted out turn around and, 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 turn and say oh no you can't actually stay here anymore mm -hmm, you need to that, yeah. up sticks and leave again and like all right okay well that would be a waste of time so yeah that's that's what I wanted to do um, and nowadays don't know don't know where i'll end up um, mm -hmm. i'm obviously building more of a digital company now um, which sure. means that we can we can live and work wherever we want to uh, well that's what i was just thinking i mean surely i mean if if it's going to exist in that kind of realm then um you'd be able to operate that from a you know a beach somewhere um presumably absolutely absolutely somewhere that's not air beach because that's the closest one i've got but nothing wrong with air beach um, nice. I, I just prefer maybe the beach of Barcelona or or the Maldives. That would be that would be another one. I've been to both. Um, I love the Maldives. We were there in two thousand and three, um, and we had one of those water villas. You know, Ooh. these it was amazing. Absolutely loved it. My wife was losing her mind because there's nothing to do. Literally. I'd been working, 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 and like really, really needed the time off. So I literally just slept and lay out in the sun and did nothing, which was ideal. Um, but my wife likes to kind of do excursions and all, all this kind of thing. But she was like, there's nothing to do. So like after a day and a half, she was completely losing her mind. But uh, but I'd like to go back to the Maldives. Um, I loved it. But Barcelona, we were there in 2015 and I, it didn't go well. It was one of these things, Barcelona's, you know, amazing city, but we, I don't know how we managed to do this, but we, we seemed to go to everywhere that didn't serve decent food. So we actually didn't have a decent meal the whole time we were there. It's like, how did this happen? And everyone's like, Barcelona's amazing, food's amazing, blah, blah, blah. It was horrific. It was absolutely horrendous. So we'd quite like to go back, but have everybody recommend one of the best restaurants to go like and go go there instead because it was like this is immense yeah i, I mean i guess i guess that's the exact same as in madrid in madrid mm. you've got two streets well two areas basically that you know if you're going there you're, you're finding the tourists which is the gran via which is the main main sort of high street and you've got the sol which is the, the big square down down at the very um down middle of the city one street down from mm -hmm. around here and that's where you find the majority of the tourists because that's where you have your sephora's your yeah your high street shops you get your five-story pre-mark um those sorts of which for some odd reason 
British people, or whenever my friends came over, that would be the first thing you'd want to go and see was the pre-mark. But they yeah. could nip up to East Kilbride Shopping Centre and see one or go into our guys. It's bizarre, isn't it? Um, but you know what? That's what they wanted to do, and it saved me money because that would be them spending it on on clothes. Mm-hmm. Um, but you went a street either direction in any way, and you would get um, more authentic Spanish food that you could that you could want in your life. Um, yeah. And if you go away from the tourist areas as well, you end up spending. Um, you buy a beer, and you get free food. And that was it. So you just keep drinking beer and you just get more food. And it changes. It obviously gets Good better deal. food the more beer you consume. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's because y- your taste changes, shall we say, um, yeah. the more beer you consume. Um, yeah, I'll eat that. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, the, the strangest one I've been in, I was in a bar. Um, we used to go every Friday morning uh, and work. And there was these sort of like sea creature things sitting in the... Um, see, see even to call, see creaturey things it's like mm, appetizing I don't know what, I don't know what they were Ugh. you tap the glass they were still alive and they would like come out of their <sighs> little tubes and it's like have you ever seen you're, you've you're seen not Peter selling Jackson? this very well no I'm, I'm definitely not but have you seen the Peter Jackson's King Kong film yes and they end up in that valley and mm-hmm. these funky things start jumping out at them and grabbing them mm-hmm it was like that miniaturized in a bar that you were to eat. They weren't eating you this time. You were eating them. No. Uh, so is, is travel, you know, on your kind of list of things to do? Like, you know, whenever we get come out of all this craziness and slowly return to the world outside, are you wanting to jump on a plane and, and go and, and travel and, and see a lot more of the world? Is that something that's you know yeah. of interest to you? Absolutely. I think one of my biggest regrets was not travelling when I was at uni. Because at the end of right. the day, you were, in, you were in uni for 24 weeks of the year. Um, and then you did your sort of two weeks of exams either side. So that's what, 24, 26, 28 weeks of the year. And then the rest of it, you had the choice in doing what you wanted to do. Um, I tend to... I, 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 um, I'm, I'm not saying I wasted it. I learned from second year up until fifth year. Uh, I spent the majority of my my summer holidays skydiving, so that was, what? Yeah, jumping out of airplanes. Um, so See, not, that that is on. That's on my list of things I never want to do, but I would really like to do. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm the the thought of it, utterly terrifies me. I'm scared of heights. Um, but anything, but anything that's kind of like, you know, if. You're you're filling in the form, and it's kind of like you know next of kin, right? Yeah. And you kind of like possibility of death. I'm kind of like maybe we should reconsider this. You know what I mean? Well, to be honest, there's a greater risk of dying on the way to to the drop zone than there is when you jump out of the plane. Okay. And the first the first time isn't scary either because you don't know what's going to happen to you. The second time's a scary one because you know I think exactly. I'd have a heart attack just. You know, you know, it, nothing would happen to me in terms of physically getting injured, maybe, but I would think I might just die of the, the sheer horror and you know fear. I think I think I'd quite like to be in that plane, not for when you have a heart attack, but just to Thanks. Hear, hear the screams or at least being on the ground so that you can hear them from fifteen thousand feet. You see, it's a weird one. It's like I would like to, do, but, but this is actually true. Um, my life insurance would be null and void. If I went up on a plane, really, and, and and jumped out, it's like it's one of the things. My life insurance, so like, are you going to do life-threatening, dangerous things? I'm like, no, of course not. No, 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 no. Yeah. So like, if something did happen to me, my life insurance would, would be null and void, which would not be good. No, um, be good. So um, I'm just yeah. thinking now. Have I told my life insurance? <laughs> <laughs> um, no, uh, no. I'm pretty sure I have because I also work freelance for the UK Bungee Club. Um, so it's bungee jumping. Um, and yeah, I've not I've not ventured into scuba diving yet. That's 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 next. On so I mean, are you a bit of an adrenaline junkie then? Is that is that, has that become? Have you like I was going to say when you were young, younger, um, you know, a fetus? Yeah. Were you thinking that you're know, like yeah, I want to jump out of a plane. Yeah, I want to do something daredevilly and insane. I mean, yes and no. I was bullied into going skydiving. Um, okay. I, I was at a, and I say bullied in a, in a loose term before anybody starts feeling sorry for me. Um, 
I was at the sports fair and somebody approached me and when I was younger um, you could sell anything to me and I would buy it anything don't put that in a t-shirt don't put that in a t-shirt no absolutely not now now apparently I, I just have the face of approachable and anybody and everybody will come up to me but mm -hmm. I don't buy things anymore um, or nearly as much as I used to but um, yeah somebody approached me and went do you want to jump out of a plane and I just went yeah why not um, and that was it that was it. Two weekends later, I got onto the into the minibus yeah. and got shipped off up to Strathallan in Scotland, uh, and just uh, down from Perth, and yeah, did my training and got lobbed out of a plane. Wouldn't be me. Would not be it. me. So, it. you've got this online platform happening, right? Yeah. Uh, business. You, you're, you're hoping to launch that over the next couple of months, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and is that falling under the first to train brand, or is that going to be something differently? Or so that's something that we're still working out. As, as a company, it will still be under first to train. Um, what we're working out just now is obviously the website will be called Workplace Training Courses because that is something that is exactly what it says in the tin. It does exactly what it says in the tin. Um, if you're looking for workplace training courses, boom, there you go. There's a site you'll find yeah. them. Um, I'm, I've also got the health and safety side of the company, and we're sort of coming and going whether uh, what way we go with that. Um, so first, the training will always stay with this platform. Um, it's just what what the other half will, yeah. will move off and, and do, because uh, obviously first to train, you never think instantly um, of health and safety, which is um, something that we we need to obviously start to to improve on. Um, getting the, getting the brand name out there a wee bit more, but you think mm -hmm. of first to train, you think of training. So, um, that element will, will sort of stay. So yeah, and 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 a short answer to the long answer I just gave you there. Yes, it's staying under the same brand. Right. Okay. So if people are looking to find out uh, more about uh, First to Train, where do they go? So the best way to do it, get in touch with us um, would be via my LinkedIn. Get in touch with me, and you'll see what we share uh, on Niall there. Um, and I'm sure there'll be. Uh, a link put somewhere uh, or you could say it I'm, th this is the prompt to say the name of the website oh okay uh, <laughs> there you go I'm learning I'm learning more and mm -hmm. more so you can catch me on LinkedIn I set, I'm going to set you up there this is the bit where you plug and say oh, it's www.firstofchain.co.uk yeah so uh, as Greg has just mentioned there oh, uh, is that what it is right? okay good it is so the health and safety side of things is currently under firstofchain.co.uk um, the Online platform for the learning and development is workplace training courses dot com, mm -hmm. um, and to get in touch with me personally, it is best just grabbing me on LinkedIn. You shall find me under the name of Niall Rachman, uh, which is R A C H M A N, and you can probably. Do you like to do the uh, kind of guttural? And yeah. Rachman. Either that, or I get Rachman or Ranchman. Mm -hmm. I get the occasional Ranchman. Ranchman. Um, okay. The names I get, I get Niall, Nigel. Neil, uh, um, I sometimes get George. Yeah, but... that's somebody not looking. <laughs> You've got the t-shirt. Oh wow! Yeah, get it right. Uh, Niall, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, it is a pleasure as ever blethering with you. Uh, you we've been pretty good about not swearing. I think that we should we need to give ourselves bonus points for that. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, that's I. Not bad. I need to get the swear jar out and just fill it back up with swear words absolutely uh, yeah but thank you very much for having me it's been great sure. to chat. Uh, my pleasure and I shall see you very very soon absolutely